If you've watched R6 Professional play, even casually over the past two years, you've no doubt heard of the SSG room on Clubhouse Basement. This strategy went undefeated in the regular season for months after it was first introduced, and it was one of several elements that led to SSG getting a reputation for utter dominance on Clubhouse. In fact, this very strategy has completely transformed the way the teams play Clubhouse Basement, and I'm not exaggerating. Pretty much every Pro League team used to play the site in one way. Five people would stack the utility across Basement and try to avoid giving up any ground. Occasionally, you'd see one or two people off-site for a roam, but this type of play was far less popular. Somewhere in 2018 to 2019, SSG has started to introduce this strategy into their scrims, and eventually into their regulation play. It was at that time that SSG maintained a 100% win rate on Church Armory, until the rest of the regular league eventually figured out a way to play against this type of strategy. Now, virtually every type of team that has added some variation to this roam strategy to their strap book, and teams will either play the normal 5 men on site, or roam based off the concepts SSG developed. SSG developed such a unique take on defending this site that, to this day, any sort of roam that remotely resembles theirs will always be called a variation of the SSG roam. With the context for this established, I'm going to start by explaining the theory of what's going on here. If you aren't interested in that, you can skip to the explanation of the strategy from the timestamp in the description. This strategy is primarily concerned with three elements, wasting time, wasting utility, and falling back. These three principles together make it so that the defenders are able to maintain more map control for longer, meaning that by the time the attackers finally do get to site, they either don't have enough time or resources to successfully pull off and execute. So let's look at how SSG has pulled this off. For starters, they run a Cade, a Mozzie, a Castle, a Legion, and a Vigil. Cade is meant to deny hard breach, obviously. Mozzie is meant to deny intel. Castle is meant to deny utility, Legion is meant for information and a little bit of a annoyance, and Vigil is meant to deny information as well. When we look at the way they set up site, we'll notice that Vigil reinforces triple, Legion will go into dirt and reinforce dirt, as well as make the rotate to blue and in between church and armory. Other than that, pretty much everyone immediately leaves site to go set up elsewhere. Vigil reinforces kitchen hatch, while Castle barricades off main door and billiards door. He also opens the moto hatch. Meanwhile, upstairs, they open the gym hatch, they reinforce the hot tub walls, as well as opening up a rotate from construction to logistics, opening the construction hatch, reinforcing the CC walls, and making vertical holes in cash to watch into stock, as well as lounge. So, with the setup, let's see how the round plays out. For a start, they use two Thatcher EMPs on the CC wall, as well as an extra thermic charge, just trying to clear Mozzie out of cash. They have a Mozzie pass on the door from cash or construction, which allows Mozzie to fall back while they waste utility trying to get that information. And of course, as soon as they open the CC wall, Mozzie falls back, because again, his goal is to waste time. So, Thatcher, seeing the Mozzie pest, goes through the breach that they've made, sees that there's not anyone there because they've wasted the time, and uses his third EMP just to clear the Mozzie pest. All this is for the second floor, keeping in mind that the site's basement. So now that Mozzie is receiving a lot of pressure, he falls all the way back to logistics, and plays a little more passive here. I will notice that Castle is going to get on cams, and Cade's going to play on main stairs, giving Mozzie support. Once again, their goal is to work together, waste utility, and fall back. Since they know they still have hot top wall reinforced, they can use that as cover and play in master for a little bit longer. Waste a little more time, a little more utility. Habana is going to play master window. Thatcher is going to push in from construction to master. At this point, they know with only a minute and a half left, they have to take first floor and start thinking about an execute. So, because of the utility thermite's wasted, he's left with using an exothermic to clear a castle, because the sledge is dead and Soft doesn't really have time to rotate. They finally confirm that they have second floor, but by this time, they're already down to about a minute. Finally, they hit the site with 55 seconds left, and they start to drone. But by this time, they have zero exothermics, zero Thatcher MPs, so Hoban is their only hard breach if they hope to get triple wall open. They don't have a sledge, they don't have nades, and Zoff's already used some of the utility as they cleared a second floor and first floor. So, notice that Habana gets taken out, and now they don't have Heart Breach. At this point, it should be pretty much a guaranteed win for SSG, but to kind of spoil the round, they basically throw by taking gunfights they don't need to. So, I'm going to cut it there. So, now that we know what SSG did, let's look at what we're going to do. So we're going to start with a castle. Castle is very important, obviously, because not only does he waste time and utility, but if you look at the setup, if you castle this, you castle this, that protects your moto fallback. The third castle that we didn't really see was on construction window. If you castle that, that protects the fallback through the construction hatch. Now, in addition to castle, obviously we're going to run a vigil. Vigil is important because he allows us to confuse the attackers, essentially. If vigil plays first floor, 
his notification will still seek through second floor, and that means the attackers can't tell if he's first or second floor. This helps with the confusion, because again, the goal is to waste time, and if they can't tell if Vigil's really in second floor, how are they going to clear it effectively? We're also going to play Legion, just like SSG did, because he provides intel with his goos, and he's a pretty good sight anchor. He also has two impacts, so he can make the rotates. We're going to play a Mute instead of a Cade, because while he can still do the same wall denial, he also helps out Mozzie with the intel denial. And given that this is primarily targeted at ranked players, the intel denial is going to be very helpful when you have those monkey ashes trying to swing you. And of course, finally a Mozzie, because he's really good at intel denial as well. So now, let's look at the setup. Like they did, we're going to reinforce Church Triple. So we have three walls there. And we're also going to reinforce Dirt. This blueprint doesn't show it, but just know that two reinforcements will be dedicated towards Dirt. We're going to have a rotate between Church and Armory in the default spot. And we're going to have a rotate to Gen on the dummy wall. On first floor, we're going to reinforce Kitchen Hatch and open Moto Hatch. On second floor, we're going to use our remaining four reinforcements to get the two walls to Hot Tub and the two walls on CC. In addition, we're going to open the gym hatch, the construction hatch, and we're going to make a rotate from construction to logistics, and from bathroom to hot tub 90. Now for utility. Castle is going to place one barricade on the door to main into bar, and the other onto bar into billiards. His final castle barricade will cover up the construction window. Again, Castle's barricades are protect the fallbacks. The barricade on the construction window protects the fallback through the construction hatch, and these two barricades protect the fallback through moto hatch. Vigil doesn't have any utility set up, so he's going to impact the moto hatch, and he's going to impact the gym hatch, opening these two lines of sight. Mute will place a jammer one on the hot tub wall for hard breach denial, another one on the CC wall for hard breach denial, one next to Castle's barricade on the main door, and the final one on the door to dirt. Mozzie is going to place a pest on the door from cash to construction, on the door from construction to master, and on the door from strip to bathroom. Legion is going to make the rotate to gen and the rotate between sites, and he'll use his goo mines wherever he plays. Now for positioning. Mute and Mozzie will play second floor, with Mozzie starting out in cash and Mute starting out in master. These two should work together, using the rotates they have to support each other and waste time during the push. Vigil will play in first floor, which allows him to leverage the unique fact that his ability goes only upwards. So, if attackers are joining the bar, his notifications will not only show up on the bar, but second floor as well. So even if Mute and Mozzie have already fallen back, Vigil's notifications can still stall attackers. And the two people playing in sight. Castle will play close to Dirt in Armory, and Legion will play in Gen. Now, let's be honest. Most of our ranked games go a little more chaotic than a systematic clear of the second floor, then first floor, then basement. So to really understand how this strat is supposed to work, given that it's targeted at a ranked audience, we have to incorporate the fallback system. Mozzie and Mute have to use their vertical angles to not only support Vigil and the people in basement, but to be able to fall back very quickly if the people in basement detect a rush. Castle will quite easily be able to detect a dirt push, and Legion, like as well, an oil rush or a secret push. Vigil will be in bar, so he'll be able to detect a kitchen push, or garage, or even just down main stairs, whatever. The key to this strategy is for the whole team to work as one unit that's maintaining map control of the entire map for as long as possible. With Mute and Mozzie maintaining control of second floor, it means attackers aren't likely to push it, or if they do, Mute and Mozzie are in a perfect position to waste time. If they don't, and they push first floor, then Vigil, Mute, and Mozzie can work together. Here, Mute will want to fall back, maybe the gym hatch, whereas Mozzie could fall back through the construction hatch. And then they can support Vigil, and once again use the moto hatch, main stairs, or if it's available, secret stairs to fall back. All these avenues make it so that again, we support our three goals of wasting time, wasting utility, and falling back. The ultimate goal for the end of the strat is for all five players to arrive back on site with little attacker utility left to use. This means that the defenders are in a strong position to get refrags as they can play in these positions, support each other, and ideally with little time, only play smart and let the attackers basically try their best to get into sight with 30 seconds left. That may not always be how it goes down, but the theory is strong, so let's see how setup looks like in-game.
There's definitely room for improvement here based on the way that I've set up the strat, but I think I've communicated at least the core principles and setup clearly so that you're able to adapt it to your own ranked games or whatever games you find yourself playing. I've left a link in the description so that you can view the strategy on Strapbook. Here you're seeing a preview of it, and while the visual aspect might change, I promise that the link will remain the same and the content will remain the same, so if you'd like to share the strategy, you're welcome to do so. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I hope you've learned something.